and I admit all. Here we go. All right. That looks good. Hello and welcome everyone from the waiting room and joining our seasonal platter workshop today. We just wait a couple of more seconds. We still have people coming in. All right. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's all happening. Okay, and here we have, I present to you um, Amanda, who is going to lead us through the session today. Hi, I'm Jenny. I'm, yeah, <laughs> we can see you. I'm Jenny. I'm just here in the background. I'm going to man the chat for you. So if you do have any questions, feel free to pop them into the chat box and that's also where you will find all the links to the cookie do recipes that we are going to present today. So hi everyone, Amanda Cook's my name, or Cookie as they call me, or Mrs Thermo, whoever you want to know me, I'll go by anything that's got a Thermomix at the end of it. Um, for, I've loved being with Thermomix for the last 10 years and um, I've been a consultant and now a current team leader. Um, and today we're so um, excited to be presenting this amazing pleasure of uh, preparing a seasonal platter class for you. Um, we're bringing all our superpowers to this Zoom session um, and I, you're gonna take away some amazing hints and tips. But what we really wanna see is when you've taken all that away, please share all this uh, with your team leaders on your socials, because that's what we love. It's about share, share, share. Um, we had a big think about our platters and what we wanted to show you. Um, I feel like I'm the Pavlova Queen. I hear a lot of people talking about Marine. I'm just trying to print out our confirmation. Can I give you our fail. quotation number? Just one second. Cohen, C -O -H -E -N. Someone's off mute. Trying to mute. Yes, one <laughs> second. Yes. So you will see on your cookie do uh, um, platform. One second, Amanda. Okay. One second. I need to. Here we go. Can you unmute yourself? Sorry for the technical issues we just had. Here we go. We always have a few technicals. <laughs> and guess what? Why we have that is because we're real in real kitchens. But as you will know, for the people that are joining us for you know the repeat offenders, we've been doing these since April and. Love the way we've all pivoted into this um, camera world in our kitchen, and who knew how um, successful and amazing it could be to support you guys out there. So, without further ado, um, I'm going to jump into some meringue. So, of course, for the beauty of of the uh, classes, we've already prepared this big batch for you. Is everyone going ooh -ah at that, Jenny? So that's all the meringues you're going to be ending up with. But I just want to show you the process. So let me just remove my Santa face from my demo mix. And, okay, big important points when you do a pavlova is that you have the cleanest, sweetest bowl ever. The way to do that, I just do it, use the uh, boiling jug mode with some vinegar, half a jug of water, and I just boil it. Then I air dry it upside down, make sure it's all squeaky clean. Same with the butterfly, make sure that's all clean. No fat in the bowl. The biggest um, fail for meringues is that there would be maybe some butter or some oil under your blade and that's going to give you a meringue fail. So what I'm going to do is just start the recipe. We are using this um, simple recipe just with meringues, three ingredients. Set the oven for 90 degrees, line two baking trays, we've done that. We've got 220 grams of white sugar, you can use caster sugar or icing sugar, I've got icing sugar here and then um, now, we're going to just go past the milling stage. We've already done that. So there's a, the beauty of fast forwarding things as well. So now, insert the butterfly. We go. I've got four egg whites here. Room temperature, refrigerated, doesn't matter because 
we heat them now to 37 degrees. So they're going into the bowl. And then we're using salt, a pinch of salt going in. Really literally just a pinch of salt. And then without the measuring cup on, we start four minutes, 37 degrees on speed 3.5. So this is where the first magic happens for the rings. So what we'll do is I take five minutes to start with. I'm going to get this to the nice and thick glossy stage and then Jenny's going to move back to me and we'll do the second stage and so on and so forth. And then you can see we put together my amazing seasonal tableau photo, which is great for sharing. So over to you, Jenny. Thanks, guys. All right. I'm just going straight to the next kitchen and that is uh, Mandy Powers. Hi, guys, um, and welcome to my kitchen. I'm very happy to have you here this morning. And what I'm going to do, as Amanda said, we, we're doing that. We're showcasing quite a few different um, platters today. And mine is based on a cookie do recipe, which is avocado or tuna and avocado poke bowl. Um, so, it, so it's an Asian inspired platter. And I have actually started because there's a few elements. We just really want to show you some of the functions today. Uh, and what I've done is I've made the dressing, which was literally chucking a whole lot of ingredients in and whizzing up for 30 seconds. It was that easy. And I've also made um, a little uh, thing you'll see when, when we put the platter together at the end, which is just basically some um, salted roasted peanuts and chili. So that just goes on and just adds a little bit of a kick to the dish. But we'll come to my... Um, Thermomix now, and I have the next stage was actually cooking the rice for the poke bowl, and um, it's a mixture of wild rice. So I've got more wild rice just so you can see. I'm sure you probably all know what wild rice rice looks like, but there's the black wild rice that takes longer to cook than the white. So um, that has been in there already, and I have done that bit so that now I can just show you. I'll take the lid off. I'm going to use my spatula. Well, hang on, there it is. The hook on my spatula to pull out my um probably should go to the next stage here and see what i'm really meant to be doing add the washed long rice to the simmering basket so don't actually need to pull it out i'm just going to lift the lid up and i have actually pre-washed just you just have to wash the white rice until the water runs clear i'm adding that in and i'm going to stir it through with my um my wild rice at the basics when it comes to steaming um is you need to have a, a minimum of 500 grams of water or liquid of any or you know stock whatever it is in in your bowl um and you steam varoma temperature speed one now if it's going to be longer than um than 30 minutes you need to add an extra 250 grams of water for each extra 15 minutes this has asked me to put the varoma dish in position and it's asking me to weigh in, it will be asking me to weigh in these edamame beans. So these are just frozen edamame beans, um, which are just going to sit in there, uh, all pretty weighed. S secure my Varoma lid. And then I'm going to do 10 minutes Varoma temperature. Um, it's actually going speed four for this, but it's always a minimum of speed one with your when you're steaming. So I'm going to get that going and uh, then we're going to move on to the next kitchen. Yes, we're going quickly back to Amanda. She wants to show us something. Here we go. And can I just, before we start, Amanda, I see that, um, some people have raised their hands. Can you just please your questions, pop in the, pop them in the chat box so um, I can see them and answer them there for everyone. Thank you. Over to you. Amanda, oh, I think you're muted. Sorry. Oh my God, the story of Zoom is asking you to... Okay, so um, we've been going, we've got 10 seconds to go, I'm going to stop it. I really want to show you this next point of the meringues, which is where it all should be looking. This is that, you know, here's that first part. So that's your four egg whites, a pinch of salt, and um, that how amazing and glossy is that? Right, so next part of the recipe, this is where the magic happens, and this is the technical part where you need to go slowly. So we're just going to um, go for three minutes, 30 seconds. Okay, my tip is that um, I normally extend, you need to add this sugar, it's 220 grams, one teaspoon at a time. The first um, addition of the sugar is the most important part. So um, I'll just put the lid on. So we're at 37 degrees for um, 
Yeah, 37 degrees or speed 3.5. Start doing the short entry. So just see one teaspoon at a time. Start off slowly this part. This is the part where um, your meringues can I've heard that sometimes. So just start doing this. You can see that it's all just going in slowly. You may need to extend that time. So sometimes my sugar is not in at the three minute 30 mark. In fact, I'll guarantee you, you would say it's not. So it already at this point, five minutes so that I can get this meringue looking really glossy. So we don't need to stand here for the whole time, Jenny. But when we come back, I'm going to show you that meringue is ready to put on the tray glossy balls that we all love to see. Um, what I also wanted to say is that some, it's some great stuff that happens at our CDC, BCEs. You'll probably find today that after you've watched the video, you want to race home and make all these recipes, that's definitely the aim. Um, you may want to come and join our team. So, you know, you've got awesome consultants and team leaders on here today. Um, so much fun, so much happening with Therapy. It's never been a better time to join. So we love our raving fans coming to join us here at the Inner Branch. Or you may even wish to have your own cooking experience with your consultants. We've still got um, dates in our diaries available until Christmas. We can tell you make a special um, recipe for you um, and anything that you want to see. So please reach out to consultants. Anyway, that's it for me. My marine's going slowly and I'll see you in about 10 minutes or so. Thanks, Jenny. Okay, wonderful. So from one Amanda to the next Amanda, we're heading over to... Amanda Nolga's kitchen, and she's going to show us some of the high heat functions that the beautiful new TM6 has on offer. Over to you, Amanda. Thanks, Jenny. So I'm really, I think I'm very lucky today because I get to make this beautiful rainbow platter of uh, sauteed vegetables and crudités with a traditional hummus dip that I actually made I've made already. And if you haven't tried the traditional hummus dip, I really recommend you try it. It is silky smooth, um, absolutely beautiful. And what I love doing also is slow cooking my chickpeas um, with the new blade cover. So if you don't know about the blade cover, it is an awesome accessory for your Thermomix. It just sits easily on top of the um, blade and it gives you a greater capacity for cooking um, larger cuts of meat or vegetables. And it's excellent for um, slow cooking chickpeas. So there we go. So today I'm actually going to make for you the sauteed, I'm going to start by doing the sauteed vegetables and I've got a selection of beautiful coloured um, cauliflower. So the white and the purple, I was really excited I could find the purple and I've also got some very interesting looking um, yellow uh, beetroot. So I thought that would be interesting to pop in and saute as well. So when I get it on, I'll show you how you can find this recipe. It is from the Canadian collection. So um, I'm going to start and then I'll show you how you can find it. So we've got two cloves of garlic going in and 15 grams of extra virgin olive oil. A little bit over, but that's okay. And a quarter of a teaspoon of red chili flakes. So now we're just going to add our, crud our crudities. So we've got again, the cauliflower, the recipe actually says um, 400 grams, but I'm just going to fill it up. And the purple. And now the beetroot. So as long as I'm not over the maximum line, it's fine. And I'm not, so that's actually a total of 800 gram, 825 grams of vegetables. Oh, and we're just gonna add a teaspoon of salt. So I might be a bit generous with the salt because it's actually double the, the vegetables. Okay. All right, and actually thinking about that, I'm just gonna splash a little bit more olive oil as well. Now we're just going to pop the splash guard on. There we go. And this is so high heat mode is will the Thermomix will go up to 160 degrees on high heat mode. Now it is a mode that is inbuilt within a recipe, so you won't actually find it with all your other modes. So if you want to use high heat mode, you need to find a recipe that uses high heat mode. 
So that's just going to saute now for seven minutes. Um, Jenny, did you want me to talk about the finding the cookie do, finding the recipe, or um, no. we come? I think we kind of come uh, on it. Let, let's let's see the let's hear that now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we head over to right. so I'm just going to have to move my computer so you can see my screen. So you might also not know that while you're cooking, you can actually get into cookie do. So that's a good thing to learn as well. So hopefully you can see my screen okay. Yeah, that's great. Right. So what you do is. You, when you're cooking and you want to go to cookie do, you just hit the home button and that saves your recipe where you were. So then you swipe to the right to get to cookie do. And I'm just going to pop in broccoli saute. So the key with cookie do is you actually need to know the title of the recipe. Um, so it's not sauteed broccoli, it's broccoli saute. So you can also just type in broccoli and then <laughs> it'll come up with some suggestions. And then yeah, you can it's, just, from... it's just a little bit harder when um, you're searching for a recipe that's from an international collection. So it's good if you've got the actual recipe, but you're right, Jenny. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in our filters, so I've just put broccoli saute. These little um, stylus pens are great too. Uh, filters, so we go into filters because this is from the Canadian collection. So we're just going to go down and... So what I usually do is I, I select English and then I deselect Australia. So you're in the well, filters right now. Just say yeah. that the, the screen's a little bit bright so we can't really see the... Oh, yeah. so, so you went into the filters so we can see that on the top right-hand corner. Yeah. And that's when we where we can uh, make some some um, selections. Yeah. As, as per default, there's always the Australian filter in there. And when we want to access international national recipes, we just can take off the Australian filter and voila, there will be over 60,000 recipes right there, your fingertips. Yeah. Thanks, Jenny. No worries. Thanks so much for showing us this. Amanda, and now, surprise, we're not going to another Amanda. <laughs> uh, now I have K for you. And uh, here we go. That's, yes. that's Kay's kitchen. Hello. Um, welcome everyone and hello to my customers especially. Um, yeah, so we're doing, I'm doing the um, charcuterie uh, platter or the cheese, cheese platter. Um, so I've got some things here um, and then I'm going to make two dips. So making the tzatziki and romesco dip, which is beautiful and both very easy. Um, so I'm going to start with the tzatziki um, and no preservatives, save money as well. So a lot of the ones that you buy have so many additives and nasties in it. Um, so this is super simple. So first of all, I've got my stylus pen here from the mix shop. Um, so I'll go here and go to my wig um, and then while it's cooking, while it's making it, I'll show you some other things. So I'll go start cooking. I've got two Lebanese cucumbers which have been sliced lengthways and then scoop out the seeds um, just with a spoon um, and which you can use them. You can eat those. I will give them to the dog or something too so don't waste them. Um, and also a teaspoon of salt. And... Pop the lid on. And there's so many dips you can do in the family. Oops. <laughs> um, yeah, this, that was just chopping there. Um, then I'm going to transfer those into the simmering basket. Yeah. And then just let the uh, drain uh, for about 10 minutes. And then I'll come back to that recipe. So just pop it in there. And with my second bowl, I'm going to do the other dip and then I'll finish off with the first one. So I'm now going to go to the Romesco dip. This is a Danny Ballant recipe. Um, beautiful for entertaining, very Christmassy, festive as well. Um, so I'll just go start cooking. And it's super simple. 
So 150 grams smoked almonds, pop that in. And then go next. And millet speed seven for 10 seconds. Yeah, Danny Valent once said about this dip, it feels like cheating just because it's so quick and uh, but so delicious. Exactly. This is, you know, a few ingredients and so simple. So that's melded up really nicely there. Um, and these are beautiful just on their own. Um, now it's 500 grams roasted red capsicum, uh, which you can buy in um, jars or you can make those as well. Um, it's got tips for making it if you're wanting to do that. Um, so that's very easy, 500 grams of that. So next, it says 500 grams sherry vinegar. I didn't have that. So you can use any alternative vinegar, red wine vinegar, balsamic vinegar, which is what I've got. So just 50 grams of that. Um, and then go next. One teaspoon smoked paprika. Simple, I'm just gonna estimate there. And pop the lid on. And speed five for 10 seconds. So we have a question in the chat box where we, where we do, where do we get the smoked almonds? You can get them from the supermarket um, and specialty stores and things as well. So um, yeah, they're just available in the supermarket. Be mindful because some, if you're doing a gluten-free that some of them aren't gluten-free. Um, mm. So just check that as well. So. I also found them uh, at Costco's. Uh, so if you're a Costco member, then you'll find them there too. Oh, they're good to know. Yeah. Both from source. Okay. Yes. Um, so just a season to taste. So I'm just putting a bit of pepper, a bit of salt, put the lid back on. Five seconds before again. Yeah, basically there's lots of options for the almonds. So it doesn't have to be this, the smoked ones. Uh, exactly. um, can yeah. be really anything. You could do it you yourself. Want. You know, you could roast them with some spices on it. Um, tamari ones, exactly. You could put some paprika and roast them in the oven yourself too. Um, so that's the dip, super easy. I'm just gonna put that into a little bowl on my platter. And super quick. <laughs> That was not even five minutes. You uh -huh. whipped up. <laughs> and I've got two bowls, so I'm going to put one on each. And this is also a beautiful dressing or marinade for meat. Um, so you could, you know, put this on a salad or put this on grilled meats. There's so many uses for it. Um, it's just beautiful. So um, that's the dip there. And it makes a lot as well. So that's one quantity and... The rest. Beautiful. How easy was that? Um, now, now I'm going to go back to the tzatziki recipe. So I'll just go back here. My week. And here. So then it just tells you um, the next step. Hmm. We have another question because the suggestion was to get to source. So you can Google source. They do have um, lots of different stores all around Melbourne and you can also order online with source. Yes. And that's a great store as well for all of those um, staple ingredients. Yeah. So I'm just going to pop that there. It says to clean and dry. I'm not going to do that because it's all going in together. Um, one garlic clove. Instead of garlic, I've got chives. Um, but you can use, you know, what you've got as well. But garlic um, is what it says there. Three to five sprigs dill or mint. I've got mint from the garden. Um, but And dill is also really nice in this. Pop the lid on. Speed seven. I'd love to hear, yeah, if you've made your own dips, uh, what other dips you like as well. So go next. And then scrape it down. Um, now 300, oh, so I'll just show you that in there. Beautifully chopped. Smells amazing already, that mint. 
850 grams of Greek yogurt, which I made this in the Thermomix. So I made it using um, the new white um, Thermoserver in the Varoma and it's beautiful, saves a lot of money as well. So pop that in. You can also do it in yogurt jars, which is really good. And then go next, 20 grams of lemon juice, tuck that in. Next, 30 grams olive oil. This is super simple. You can serve it with some beautiful flatbreads um, in wraps, lots of uses as well. One pinch of pepper. So actually for, for more dip ideas, um, try cookie do. So when you go into cookie do and the search, global search bar, just type in the word dip and see what's going to happen. <laughs> it, exactly. It's got to be a surprise. And if you take off the Australian filter, it will be even more surprise. Yes. Um, yeah, the hummus, um, the capsicum dip. There's so many beautiful dips. Herb and garlic dip. Um, yeah, so it's just strained off the juice. Um, it's a bit hard to see in the angle. But yeah, so there's like a green juice in there. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've added that cucumber back in, pop the lid on and go to speed three, 15 seconds and we'll be done. And it's yeah, so much better to make your own dips, taste so much better as well. Uh, you can make guacamole, um, yeah, just so many options. How many garlic cloves were there in that recipe? One. Just, just one. one. Okay. You can do it to taste if you like it more garlicky and more. Oh, I would add four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's a beautiful tzatziki. So I'm going to put some here in the bowl. Oh, it smells so good. Um, and just some here as well on this little plate. And how easy is that? Two beautiful fresh dips. Um, I've also got this blue cheese, walnut and blue cheese shortbread. Uh, which I've made this morning. Um, that's great as gifts or to go on your cheese board. And I'll just show you the whole, um, the boards all together. So um, some other things you can put on there, you can make your own quince paste, you can make your own pâtés. Um, there's just so many different options uh, with making a beautiful grazing platter. So thank you everyone. And I'll pass you back to Jenny. All right, um, now we are quickly heading back to our first Amanda <laughs> in, yay, here we go. How's the meringues going? Yeah, I'm I'm two Amandas in the um, branch and one Mandy. I mean, hello, we're the Amanda show. Now, there's <laughs> our beautiful meringue. I mean, that it's stunning and shiny and everything as well. So I'm just going to show you the two minutes before we um, zoom over to, I think, Michelle's kitchen. So what I normally do, two options, is I can fill my piping bag. Did I show you these um, Thermix and Australia piping bags? They're awesome. Um, you can fill these up and do lovely piped meringues if you want the lovely swirly or twirly meringues. Um, you get about 70 from uh, doing it that way. Or if you're wanting to do like the big ones, which is this sort of style here, which I say they're just free format. Um, they're the ones that we go right up to. You just simply take a scoop of your meringue in no particular, um, you know, order and just pop it onto your um, Thermomix mat, silicon mats, like that. And just to give it that sort of little swirl finish, just to rub your spoon around. Not You want to flatten it too much. You just want it to sort of come out nice and fresh with a bit of pattern there. You can also swirl some berry coolie into that mixture really gently if you want that swirl look going on, some strawberry coolie, chocolate coolie, anything like that. Um, so that's just one other option. So we're going to fill up that tray. That's just I wanted to show you that you really want to see all those lovely steps and I think you'll agree that um, thermo mix meringue definitely is possible. A lot of people out there that say it can't be done um, never fail. Just have that clean bowl and you'll be cooking with gas. So you'll come back to me later when I assemble all this amazing platter for you. Thanks, Jenny. Over to you. No, no worries. So here we do have beautiful Michelle. What are you going to show us today? Hello and welcome to my kitchen. So I'm in East Bentley. So, you know, thanks to the amazing technology of Zoom, we're 
Zooming in from all over Melbourne. I do wish we were together because imagine the feast that we would be having at the end of this uh, show. Show. Um, I love it. So I'm very lucky today. I feel like I've got a very easy thing to do. And the thing that I love about what I'm making today is that it's something you can do in advance. So with all this sort of festive stuff, you know, it's good if you can have things that you can make the day before, or even a couple of days before, and just have them ready to go. So I am going to bring you over to my two friends here, my Team Six and Santa. Um, <laughs> we'll come a little bit closer to the Team Six for this part. And my dish, so I have saved it in um, recently cooked because I went through it this morning. So we've talked about you can save it in different areas. I'm doing the pecan pie cheesecake cups. So I'm going to go into that recipe and restart. Now, one of the things I love about uh, cooking with these recipes, and this is actually a tip I picked up from Danny Vallant at one of her classes many years ago when I was a very new consultant and didn't even really know who she was. But she talked about often you'll find recipes with multiple components and you don't need to do the whole recipe. You might just do one component. So this is um, three components to this recipe. There's the base to the cheesecake, there's the cheesecake mixture itself and there's a crumb that goes on the top. So you might just make the crumb and put it on your ice cream. So, you know, really have, explore the recipes when you're browsing because it's a really fun thing to do. So when you're in the recipe, you can go down here to get your ingredients ready, which is what I did this morning. Um, and it also gives you other information, nutritional information, um, utensils you'll need and any other hints and tricks with the recipe. Um, so when you're ready to go, you're just gonna go start cooking. Now, I didn't um, have pecans, so I'm actually using walnuts today. And I have made this before using the walnuts and it's delicious. So I'm just gonna roll with that again because I bought a big bag of walnuts at the market. So in they go. And we'll pop the lid on there. Now, anyone who doesn't have a TM6, if you're here today with a TM31 or a TM5, the language that we use at time, temperature, speed is the same regardless of the model. But you may have noticed that I took my lid off and the measuring cup didn't fall out. So if you have a TM5, these are compatible with your lid as well. So I would encourage you to jump onto our mix shop and grab one so you're not throwing your measuring cup across the kitchen. Okay, so it's just two seconds on speed five. Beautiful. Now, again, when we're doing this, you know, we talked today about showing you different functions. With this, think about what else you could do. You might just chop some nuts to pop them on a salad. You might be doing your own LSA. So, you know, have a little think about where you can use these. This is great to make your own mueslis and things as well. So setting that aside, no need to wash the bowl, which is one of our most favourite instructions as, as a, not just a firmix consultant, but as a customer as well. So the next thing is 40 grams of butter. So this part is the biscuit base. The irony of the biscuit base is that my sister-in-law in Cairns had a Thermix long before I even knew what it was. And she, that was her big thing because she did a lot of baking and a lot of cheesecakes. So it's actually just going to melt my butter for one minute at 100 degrees on speed two. So while it does that, I'm going to bring it back to me and I'm just going to show you that what I've prepared to put this in. So I've just got a little, um, it's really just a casserole dish. So you can really be a bit eclectic. Now, I usually make this in our yogurt jars, but my yogurt jars are currently full of yogurt. So I've actually been saving all my little jars, my mustard jars. So you, you Dijon mustard, you English mustard, all of those, those ones that come with these little, you know, the little red lids, and they are actually perfect for this. But the other thing that's cool about this is you can do any size. So I would do some smaller ones that are sort of, you know, kid size, or, you know, when there's a dessert table and there's the pavlova tray and the cheesecake tray and you want to have a bit of everything. So to make something sort of a bit smaller means that you can, have, you know, three different desserts. Um, but I've also got a big one in here. So when I made this the other week, my husband loved this. So um, you can have all different sizes and you can get jars that you save yourself or even just in the, um, the secondhand shops. They're, it's really great. You can pick up some really fun jars and make a platter look gorgeous. So on this side, I'm actually not going to make the crumb today because it's very easy to make um, and there's not a, you know, not a skill in quite required with that. So I've got that in here. And oh, that butter melted quickly. Um, and I've got another little jar that I'm going to pop some coolie in as well. So this will be one of those things where you can build it as you go, or you can pre-make them and take them to a picnic in the park. I'm going to bring you back to my thermo mix, and we've just melted that butter beautifully. So you know, 
thinking about the applications for that as well. Um, melting chocolate. I know a lot of people love doing um, homemade gifts and things with chocolate. And one of my gorgeous customers a couple of years ago said she'd had her, her Thermomix for a while and didn't actually realise she could melt chocolate straight away. So that's why we really encourage people to have um, additional cooking experiences. Not only do you get host rewards, but you'll pick up tips. And she loved her Thermomix and thought she was getting the most out of it and said, oh, I thought I knew everything. And she goes, and I've learnt today I can melt my chocolate. I was still doing that on the stove. Now, I'm actually leaving the bourbon out because um, my kids are going to eat this as well, but it does give you the option to put bourbon in or you could put in any other, um, any other alcohol as well. It did say digestive biscuits. Um, my husband likes ginger biscuits as well. So I've actually done um, about sort of three quarters digestive and some um, ginger biscuits as well. So I'm just adding in 20 grams of the nut mix that I've just done. You can see with the team six, it weighs to one gram, but you know, this is guided cooking, you're in control. So don't be too caught up about, you know, if you're a few, few grams over or under and it's just speed six for three seconds. Now I'm going to just have a look at that and see if um, that's the texture that we want. Oh, that looks amazing. Okay. So you can see now that it's created this beautiful crumb. Sure that light is oh, good there. There we go. That's a bit better. Oh, I've got one rogue biscuit there. So do you know what? I'm actually going to give it another go. And that's the beauty of this. You're in control. So you say it's guided cooking, but you're still in control. So I'm going to pop that back on. And to do that, I just need to go back and I'm just going to repeat that step. Pretty close, but it's going to make it a bit finer. Beautiful. I know that would be perfect. I'll bring this back now. And I'll build one now. And then um, off camera, I'll build the rest and we'll all come back together. The other thing, um, so you can see now I've got this beautiful fine um, mixture. And I'm just going to grab a spoon, start with one of these smaller ones. Beautiful. And then a little tip, you can use the bottom of your spatula to just push that down. Now, I actually picked this tip up from someone in my team when we did um, little cheesecake cups at one of our cooking experiences. So, you know, even after being consultant for eight years, you pick up tips. So that's the beauty. And actually one of the reasons I joined the business, I went, oh, I've just bought this machine. I'm going to join the business. I'm going to train, stay for a couple of months, learn everything about my thermomix and then I can leave. Well, eight years on that didn't happen. And in that time, my business went from being a bit of a hobby because I had little kids to being a team leader because now they're at school and I've got more time. So as they as they've grown, so is my business. So I can really kind of pick and choose when I work. Now, what I did in advance as well was I made the cream cheese filling. Um, and again, there really no skill required. It was really simple. You may notice here, I just had a sneaky second bowl. So that's one of the other benefits of being a consultant. You do have an opportunity to earn a second bowl um, in your first 60 days as a consultant. So, um, but this is cream cheese, cream, maple syrup, and vanilla. So really, really simple ingredients. And what I've got here, so everyone laughs at me because I own a jam funnel. Now the jam funnel is on, available on the mix shop. I've actually never made jam, but I use it all the time. So I'm just gonna pop that in there. A bit more. Now. Beautiful, so it's kept my edges nice and clean. We might put a little bit more in actually. That one was a bit mean. <laughs> it looks so easy when you make that very impressive oh well i like i like easy that's why i got a thermomix everyone has their different reason for getting a thermomix mine is i love good food but i don't like to spend a lot of time in the kitchen so there you go i've popped that in there and now i've got this crumb um so if i was just popping these in the fridge to put away i might just push that down a little bit and then get a little bit of the crumb and just I'm going to use my fingers here because I'm going to be the one eating it and sprinkle it <laughs> on top. Now I'll keep building off camera, but the beauty of this now is this can actually go in the fridge. So when I made these the other week, um, they sat in the fridge for a week. My husband had one every night for dessert. He's a big cheesecake fan. But how cute is that? And how easy is that? And particularly at the moment, because people are um, mindful of 
um, you know, the, sort of the hygiene things. Everyone's got their own individual jar of cheesecake. So there you go. That's from me. I'm going to make Cooley off camera. And at the end, I'll show you my um, display or my plate that would go on the table at Christmas or in a park. See you later. <laughs> Very good. So um, one second. So I think now we're going to me uh, to my kitchen. One second. I'm trying to do everything here <laughs> at once. <laughs> and uh, where are you? Here we go. So, ah, yeah, now here I am, wonderful. Okay, so now you heard a couple of times about how excited everyone is that, uh, that they have joined the Thermomix business. And if that's something you wanna hear more about it, then I can just recommend that you stay on after this session and we will happily have a little bit of more um, about what's involved becoming a Thermomix consultant. If that's something you want to um, have a look at but before we go there, I know we have a couple of people here that are TM31 on us and TM5 on us thinking about an upgrade. And maybe you, we have tempted you here today to book your own cooking experience. So instead of the, the recipes that you see here, you can get in touch with us and we um, can give you a consultant. If you don't have one, if you do have your consultant, please reach out to them and ask them to book a cooking experience with you. We do have fabulous host, host rewards and one of the new host rewards is that was mentioned earlier is the beautiful white thermos server. And if you have collected all the thermos servers over the years now, this uh, one is the one you want to add to your list. And the reason for that is, and I'm sorry, it's a bit oh, funny. Here we go with my background. Um, so it's beautiful. So it's also same thing, double walled insulated stainless steel bowl. And this one fits exactly into your Varoma dish, all right? And the, the, the benefit of that is you can ferment 2.2 liters of yogurt, freshly made yogurt, right there in your Varoma. So the TM6 has a, a fermentation mold and that helps you making, well, like the lot of um, <laughs> yogurt, um, from scratch in your in your kitchen all in one go so reach out if you want to get your hands on this white thermos server it's not available to purchase in the mix shop also you've heard about the mix shop um, a couple of times so that's the one you can only get when you host a cooking experience um, right and speaking of mix shop if, so if you if you want to host a cooking experience and you um, going uh, going ahead and make the decision you want a Thermomix a TM6, then this month and also throughout December we offer you a hundred and fifty dollar mix shop voucher that you can um, use then to buy all the beautiful extra things that you're seeing our consultants using here today. I hope uh, that. <laughs> was tempting enough to reach out to your consultant and have a chat with them. Okay, so I think we're going back to Amanda, the first Amanda in the in the room, Cookie, and she is going to show um, show us her platter and the finish of it. Am I right? You are very right. I'm so ready to go. I've got so many components to show you. You can't see my head, but I am here. So I'm on. The, the, magic, the magic's going to be in the hands, yeah? So before I start, one of the other recipes that we did pre-make, and I know jenny has got all of them, and that's, of course, the salted caramel chocolate sauce. So just let me pour that into my jar. Oh, my God. Yum. Okay, so this one's going on the tray. So what you can see here is I've got the big tray. This is just, I mean, yeah, I know you've all got some fabulous trays at home, just a beautiful glass tray. Um, just a little tip for that caramel sauce, I could add some milk to that, put it in some ice cream and ice and turn it into a caramel milkshake. Guess what? Because the boys are home, I think we might be doing that. <laughs> and then let's just start building some of these elements. So we've done the whipped cream in the Thermomix, okay? Um, awesome. Butterfly, three minutes, 30 second intervals, whip up your cream. There's the caramel sauce. The other component that you can pre-make, now these are all great things that you can do before Christmas Day or when you've got that entertaining, you've got entertaining happening that week. This is the beautiful jar of lemon curd. Please share the love in the chat box if you're 
onto the thickening mode on the thermix and you're making the lemon curd. Now this one's actually got lemon lime and I put some um, cocoa butter in there. So it's got a sort of a lemony coconut flavor. That's that one. Then we just start doing, of course, adding the meringues. Better get the main, main component. So I've got, here's all our beautiful meringues and the other ones are in the oven now. Now they're in there for two hours on 90 degrees. And, um, and then you can just pre-make these sort of things and have them in your big tins ready for that entertaining moment. Now, just a little tip, Kmart have brought out this new set of tins. They're awesome, so I love them. Fill them up with your Christmas cakes and meringues, whatever, whatever. So let's start adding some of these. I've got different sizes. So I've got some big ones going on here. Some little just filling up the gaps. And I like it to look a bit deconstructed because that's kind of the look of the, of the platter. So just get some of those in. You can see them coming into all the little ones now. So I'll just put some of those there to start with and we'll come back to that. Look at the size of these berries this week. Oh my God, I don't know what's happening COVID, but they've gone nuts. So beautiful berries. We're just going to fill those into the tray as well in no particular um, manner, just through here. And I've also got some beautiful raspberries. Of course, no platter without raspberries. So a little bit of a going on here and here. Getting that word deconstructed. I've also got some blackberries coming in. So we've got our little blackberry area. So you can imagine people coming along and just picking up any size meringue they like, all the big ones, and making them, you know, putting them together with the curd or the chocolate, etc. etc. Beautiful. I've also got some, oh, the other great one is some caramel popcorn. So you can, oops, you can make this in the Thermomix or that, has anyone done that arm of addiction? That's amazing as well. I'll put some, some of the popcorn down here, like so. Just nice fillers as well. I've got some shredded or some shaved coconut that's been toasted, sprinkle that out there as well. And through the meringues. See, there's nice little areas to go to. Um, and then I've got my coolie. I know Michelle's made some too, but you could have some coolie. Pop that in here. Find a little gap. And, go in there. and it is like what Michelle said, it's really nice having some different, um, different glass jars. You don't have to have all the fancy ones. Now, I've also made some honeycomb. Who knew you know, make honeycomb with the thermix? So we'll just add some of that, popping that in there. You could also drizzle that with chocolate. So some of these things also turn into gifts, yeah? So that's the honeycomb coming in. How's everyone's sweet tooth going at this point? Um, then I've also got, so just to jazz it up too, just got some bits of chocolate money going around if you've got some kids coming. Of course, there'll be kids there, the money. And, um, you know, everything looks better with a flower. There's my tip for um, any platter you do, everything looks better with a flower. I haven't got the MasterChef um, tongs. I think I need that on my Christmas list. They make you feel special. So I just got the tong, the flowers happening here. And any flower, it doesn't have to be anything particular, just find something. There's some lovely little daisies. So you can see how beautiful that is. I'll even throw it into my cream. Like so. Are they edible? These flowers? Edible. Yes, yes. You know, whack a little Christmas sign in there. Just got one out of the Christmas tree. Um, bag, so that's going oops, upside down. How about that? <laughs> and then I just found these really cute little reindeers that I'm just going to pop on to the corners of the jars. It could even go on the outside of the tray. You see, just on a little peg. So we can see more is more here. Is that right? This is a more, more one. Because <laughs> It looks amazing. Yes. There you go. And, you know, you want a bit of greenery. So on the table with the cheese platter, we're going to put some, you know, of that greenery as well. But I think when I look back, everything's good. And that's that's our um, deconstructed Pavlova share platter for Christmas Day. And we'll get a fabulous photo of that and put it up for you all to, um, all to drool over. <laughs> well, every, the, the chat box is going crazy about these little reindeer clips where did you get them can you share I was this morning one dollar a packet <laughs> all right sorry i need to go now <laughs> get them it's, 
fantastic. Looks amazing. So thanks for that. And don't forget to take a photo so we can share that with our customers. So we, we can try to recreate that beautiful platter of yours there. Kind of the Pavlova magic. That's it. Christmas platter coming up. So thanks everyone before we sign up. Over to you, Jenny. Okay, wonderful. So we're going back to... Um, <laughs> I can see the hands coming in here already. Going back to second Amanda, and that is Mandy. And we are going to see how you're going to assemble and finish your platter. Yeah, thank you very much for, um, for joining me again. So I have actually put it together because it wasn't that difficult. Um, but before we actually have a look at the platter, I just want to remind everybody that when you are steaming, um, whenever you've finished your steaming, always move, um, open up your Varoma away from you, okay? And then you use the Varoma lid to pop the base of the Varoma on so you don't drip, um, you know, hot liquid everywhere. So that's just a little tip to remember when you are steaming. Okay, so I'm going to run you through this platter. Um, actually, I might have to lift my computer up so you can see everything. All right, so um, let's do that. So as you can see, uh, I've got the dressing. It is a wasabi dressing. That is the white in the white bowl there. Um, sorry, the white the white um, thing in the bowl. Um, then I've got the peanuts and chili that I told you that I'd um, made before. And then really the rest of it, um, my edamame beans are over here. Um, the rice is there. Now it does say a tuna and avocado bowl. I do have the avocado there. But what I've done is used um, hot smoked salmon. That's super easy. Um, if you're going to get tuna, you need to make sure it's um, sashimi grade. So it's best to get it from your from the fishmonger rather than the supermarket. Um, but yes, you you know you can play around with that. You could do smoked mackerel if you want. You know whatever you, sort of fish you want to do, or or no, you know no fish. Make it vegetarian. Um, I've also got some cucumber in there, some lime, some cabbage, some. Pickled um, ginger, can't go past the pickled ginger, absolutely delicious. Um, some lettuce and then the carrot, I've literally just used a peeler and just peeled strips of the carrot. So that is going to be a super delicious lunch. It's probably going to last us about four days, I reckon. But um, you can imagine be a, a lovely lunch to share with friends over the Christmas break. So thanks for coming to my kitchen and I hope you guys give it a go and let us know how you go. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. It looks, Im oops, it looks impressive um, already, but easy as. And um, I really hope that can inspire a couple of people on trying this. We're heading over to the last and final Amanda <laughs> today. And that's Amanda Noga. So how do we go? Thanks, Jenny. Um, look, I also prepared my platter because I was a little bit, I wanted to make sure it was going to look good and then I got carried away. So I'll show you my <laughs> platter. Well, actually, I'll show you the elements first. So I had some little baby um, capsicums, mini capsicums, mini tomatoes, some slices of radish. Um, I also um, got some asparagus and just blanched it. So cut it in half and blanched it. Ooh, that was noisy and um, slices of cucumber and snow peas so, not snow peas sugar snap peas yeah so this is my platter if you can see that I'll just tilt it a bit for you um, so here we've got the cauliflower so that I sauteed and we've also got the um, what was it beetroot the yellow beetroot dotted around um, and yeah, just all the elements that I described. So, I mean, obviously you can go have fun with it and it's your creation. Um, this is what I put together today. You, yours might look a bit different, but um, yeah, so there we go. So there's my veggie platter and oh, and Amanda, you inspired me. So now I'm just gonna add some sugar. Um, what are they called? The sweet pea flowers. Yeah, just pop a few. Sweet pea flowers out of my garden. I think that's a really nice um, complement to the um, to the vegetable platter. And you know they say that we should eat a rainbow at every day, and I think this is a really good example of eating a rainbow every day. So I hope you like my platter. It looks stunning. It looks stunning. And and again, so it, it really it it tells me that adding more really adds 
adds that little something to it. So yeah, go crazy with uh, the decoration. This one is looks absolutely stunning. And uh, I'm, I'm a little bit envious about all of you cooking all these beautiful platters here today. <laughs> okay, so I think we're heading back to Kay's kitchen. Oh, and want to see how she is going with her platter. Is that right, Kay? Yeah, and I kind of showed it earlier, but I'm happy to show it um, again. So, um, yeah, so we've just got the dips here and um, you can really put whatever you like on there. Some cheeses, shortbread, um, some flowers as well from the garden, meats, um, cold meats and things. So a lovely grazing board before um, before Christmas dinner or if you're entertaining with some drinks. So, um, and you can be doing dips very easily in the Thermomix to go with that. Okay, wonderful. I'm going to pop the links to the, um, to the cookie do recipes uh, in the chat box in a second. And I think we're heading once more back to Amanda and um, one second. <laughs> I'm a bit overwhelmed here. <laughs> and she is going to, um, yeah, finish off. Oh, no, no, hang on. Have we, have we, have, do we need to go back to Michelle? Have I forgotten you, Michelle? Yes, you forgot me, Jenny. I'm very... Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> hang on. You, you have your... I'm going to... Yes. <laughs> no. Have I you? I was literally <laughs> just pouring the coolie as you said that. So it was actually... Perfect timing. Oh, so I'm just going to bring it down here just to show you what I've done. So I've just got my dish here. I've got my cheesecake. So then you can come along and pick up your cheesecake and pop your own coolie in and get a little bit of crumb. And you could serve this on a much, you know, depending on how many people you had on a much bigger board, you could have fresh berries, you could have whatever you like. But one of the things I am going to do, because this has become a big thing in our team when we do a class, is I've got to do the live taste test. So, um, and it gives you an excuse to eat what you just made. So um, I'm going to do that right now. Mmm. It's so good. <laughs> the bully is still warm. The beauty of this is you could serve it still warm or that would sit in the fridge and you could bring it out tomorrow and serve it for lunch or, you know, when you had people over. Or as I said, take it to a picnic in the park. Really delicious, super simple. So I really highly recommend this as a one of your festive dishes. Thank you. Perfect. Please, we also need a photo of that beautiful platter that you've made there. Before I eat it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, before you, yeah, before you continue eating, thanks. Um, thanks everyone. Don't forget the photo. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I've got one ready to go too. I can just got a mouthful of meringue, so if you can just give me a little spotlight, maybe you don't want to see. It. <laughs> All right, we we want to see that. <laughs> one second. I've got cream, lemon curd, some popcorn. I also found another great little sprinkle is this gold sugar that's out in the shops. So of course I've thrown that on top. I've got a blackberry and a raspberry. And this is like, how, you know, people at home, they come over, they put together a little one and then they go crunch. Am I going to do that, everyone? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> we can't see you. Oh, no, we, yeah, you're off camera. We want to see the cream dripping down your chin. <laughs> to go to the, the other camera. Sorry. <laughs> go to the camera. Don't worry, I'm here. I can you can't talk now, she's eating. <laughs> Okay. That was a hit. The popcorn recipes. I oh, know the popcorns. I think you have bought them. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, see, I did run out of time because I made all those other components. However, um, you know, Audi sells caramel popcorn in a bag, so it is. This is all about expediting having all ready. Um, there is an awesome recipe for caramel popcorn on Cookie Do, as well as the um, the almond addiction. You'll hear all the consultants talking about um, um, almond addiction. If you haven't made that yet, do yourself a favour, pop it in a bag, give it out to people. So it is a year of sharing, um, probably not so much with the COVID, but keep it all family so you know where it's all going. Um, but it's still Christmas is coming and we want to um, share the love 
And, you know, what better way than coming out of our Thermomix kitchens with all these goodies and people will love you forever. And you might even inspire them on their bench. So winning, winning. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay, I think that was it. Um, we are going to, um, uh, well, conclude this session here today. I hope you find it all very inspiring to try your own platters and remember more is more and uh, yeah, go crazy. Think outside uh, the box and just add a little bit more festive flavor to your platters and um, yeah, let's eat that rainbow, will we? <laughs> um, and uh, just a quick question, where did you get the gold sugar from? Now, Tay, I can't remember that, but I reckon I got it down in one of the gourmet food shops. It's awesome. a jar though, is that what Oh, the right camera. Mm. Yeah, and keep talking. You can actually get gold salt, gold sugar, and gold pepper. Go figure. I'm into gold. Anything, anything that's got my got my name on it. I'm thinking I might um, turn that gold sugar into icing sugar because then it's going to have mm. a little sort of glimmer. So yeah, we're all going to be sprinkled with um, icing sugar this year. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful. So if anyone still wants to hear more about joining our team, please just stay on at this session. Um, we will hang out here a little bit longer for you. And um, Amanda is going to tell you a little bit about for what's involved. So thanks everyone for coming here today. And we will share the pictures and the recipes with you. Just reach out to your consultants. They will be happily sharing all the inspirational ideas and recipes with you thanks for coming see you next time and we would love to hear what your favorite are you going to make one two three or all of them okay <laughs> you want to yes, be outside now <laughs> thank you everyone who's house you can be at right now that's the question